hello PC and uh, whoever's watching. Uh, like last week, I had an idea for a video uh, while I was thinking about albums by bands which are not particularly famous for. And but I, I got the idea for like presenting ten records, ten albums from the second row, like um, that are in my eyes very great and good albums, but they're not like the most famous records. Uh, by those bands. I hope you just get it as soon as I show you show up with the first record. Um, the thing is, it's just a personal, uh, my personal way of how I think about those records. It might be different in your country. Those records are they're way bigger. And yeah, as I said, it's just my personal thinking. I didn't check any selling numbers or chart positions. It's just um, I thought a fun way, like checking out great records by bands. Um, that yeah, still some people, a lot of people may still discover. So um, first, I'd like to start with uh, the Purple record. It's their second one, the Book of Taliesin. Um By this time, it was still the Mark One uh, group formation uh, with what was his name, Rod Evans and Nick Simper in the band. So um, no Roger Glover, no Glenn Hughes, David Coverdale. They were in the band by that time. And as you can see when you check out the titles, um, they started to, um, or they didn't start actually, they did it before, but they um, they covered a lot of records, uh, songs like We Can Work It Out by The Beatles, um, Kentucky Woman by Neil Diamond, and I think they did it in such a great way, they gave him like a totally new direction, and yeah, it's really interesting to listen to those covers, and um, you can already see how the Purple started to jam over one particular uh, music piece and over one riff or uh, one melody, uh, which they were mostly famous for later on in their live shows when they uh, like made a Highway Star or especially Space Rock and like a big jam song. So um, I can highly recommend it. Uh, like from their first three records, I, I think I prefer this the most. Uh, also with Shield, like my favorite song from that period. Uh, second one is Nursery Crime. So, um, talking about Genesis, people, or you can like separate them into two main phases, like uh, early Peter Gabriel phase and later on the more Phil Collins dominated era when they went more poppy, um, which is also fine to me. It's just I really prefer Peter Gabriel years, um, also with uh, Steve Hackett in the band. And, um, yeah, even then, maybe not everyone, especially my age, is so familiar with the Peter Gable era. Um, I still think that this record in particular is less known than, let's say, Selling Him by the Pound or Fox Rod. Um, so I can also highly recommend to give this a spin. Uh, of course, mostly, I think, musical boxes, like maybe one of the classics from the early era, but uh, the other songs are maybe not that common and it's a great spin so nursery crime um, next one is Wednesday morning 3am by Simon Garfunkel it's the first record first album and we yeah, are talking about Simon Garfunkel I think most people think about uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water or the Sound of Silence record but um, actually you already find a version in the early very early version of Sound of Silence on this one um, but it wasn't like uh, a hit immediately, it was also called Sounds of Silence, it's more acoustic version, so not that much orchestration. Um, this record in particular I really enjoy because it's not, it's really focused on the harmonies of the singing and on the guitar work. Like you have maybe three instruments most time, guitar maybe sometimes, sometimes a banjo or bass, but it's very reduced to the to the main music in my eyes, like to the core of that, they have a great um, track list on this one. Uh, a lot already written by Paul Simon, but also some great covers. And for me personally, Wednesday morning 3am is their best song ever. Uh, they re recorded it later for the Sound of Silence record, but then it was called Somewhere They Can Find Me. It was way more faster, and um, yeah, not that really smooth and chill song that is on. This record so yeah Wednesday morning 3am next one I pick Heavy Horses by Jeff Rotel I think yeah talking about Jeff Rotel 
pack along thick as a brick those are like the really huge or big um album by this band but heavy horses is quite interesting it comes like um sort of medieval touch uh thing um it's yeah for me it always had sound like medieval actually i'm listening to it right now it's a lot of fun and um I think especially Heavy Horse is the main track, it's just fantastic, like 8 minute journey, and um, maybe not that much common. Also I highly recommend, unfortunately I don't have it on record on vinyl, a stand up, um, which I think is like their, their third record I think, which is also really great, a lot of different instruments, different influences, so uh, just keep you on this list too. Right, next one, 2020 by the Beach Boys. Um, I think it's called 2020 because this was like the 20th release for Capitol Records. And I think this is just insane if you think this was released in 1969 and they started at Capitol in 1962, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe 1963. And like in six to seven years, they released 20 albums. They created 20 albums for this company. Or This includes also like live recording, uh, best of compilation. But still, I think it's insane. It just shows like the the amount of work that Brian Wilson mostly did at this time. I think this record also, or maybe like, yeah, this record kind of marks like a period when Brian Wilson started to give the main responsibility in the band away, like to his brother Carl Wilson. Um, but also Dennis Wilson just appeared as a great singer songwriter. So um, also, what I really like about it is like it has like early fragments of Smile, the record that Brian Wilson started to record after Pet Sounds, uh, which was supposed to be the answer to um, to Sgt. Peppers by the Beatles, um, but unfortunately he didn't finish, and over the years some parts of the, or some songs were released on different records like Surf's Up on the Surf's Up record, or a lot of tracks re uh, were released on Smiley Smile, but also here on this one you find Our Prayer, which is it's just an insane vocal work and harmony and also Kevin Essence. So, yeah, 2020 by the Beach Boys. All right, so for a little break. Um, next one is Let It Be Rock by ACDC. Um, it's like, the thing about ACDC, I think most people like uh, High Hotel Pops Up or Back in Black, which are also like good records, huge records, um, but this is like from a more early period of the band and it's I think it's more different to the other records because it has more styles in it there's some smooth songs or some songs that are not just like the loud fast RB&B that are famous for later especially like for the latest records um, and in my eyes it has the two best songs by them it's Let There Be Rock and A Whole Lot of Rosie like the calm response and um, it's in my eyes, just the best record, yeah. Definitely worth a spin. Um, Alright, talking about the Eagles, I think most people have, like, Hotel California in their mind. But uh, also, like, the, in my eyes, like, almost all of the records are really, really quite good and entertaining, but on the borders, uh, especially good. On this one, they started to include Don Felder as the second uh, guitar player and in the band, and you can definitely hear like you have way more rock dominated songs uh, they got wanted to get a new direction like away from the country rock style music to the more rock dominated style and i think they did a great job you can hear like uh or start you can hear the starting influence of don fellow like especially on already gone uh, with the licks that he played i think it's also said I think it was really Meissner or someone who said like this song will be the same without a word of Don Felder. So this marks a new direction in the band and it's also like a great record. Um, next one we have uh, Ghost Head Sweet by the Stones. This is like the pre. It's like the second last record with Mick Taylor, uh, which is in my eyes their best period. Um, so starting with uh, work from Let It Bleed, like early sessions, but uh, and finishing with It's Only Rock and Roll. Um, 
I really enjoyed, like, from that period, I think mostly XL Main Street or Sticky Fingers are like the huge records, everyone knows them. They are fantastic, uh, but this one, uh, actually, too, and I have a, like, the feeling people tend like to oversee it. Um, it still brings, maybe it's not that diverse like um, XL Main Street, but it has some great rock and roll songs. Very straightforward. Um, they also had like a hit with uh, Age on it. And it's also like, yeah, kind of a journey. You have a lot of different styles on it and it's quite entertaining. Um, right, the next one, Amoeba Gamma by Pink Floyd. Um, talking about this, like, I really enjoyed like the early phase of Pink Floyd, like uh, this is very dominated records, uh, and this record, especially like the live version, shows like just like what an amazing band Pink Floyd were at that time. Uh, the version of Sussex Full of Secrets is over the top in my eyes, way better than on the on the original record, and it just shows how important this band was already at that time. So, um, like they did already amazing over-the-top music um, before Dark Side of the Moon, before The Wall, before Wish You Were Here. And in my eyes, this is the best way just like to start with that early period of the band and listening like to the early stuff. Um, yeah, I was like set the controls to the heart because I'm like the, this atmospheric sound and um, the way they, they arrange the song, it's just really, really good. Also, I like the studio record, though it's not the main reason why I uh, chose this one. Yeah. And last one, um, I think actually the band might not be that famous as well, but um, we're talking about Sparks. I think most people have like Kimono and my house on their mind, or maybe propaganda in the street. But um, this record actually, like, this is one of the rare bands where I can really enjoy every record because it's always different. Uh, they still have like one or two significant aspects that uh, describes the sound or defines their sound, like the high-pitched voice of um, of Ron Mail and um, the keyboard-dominated songs. But um, I just really like it. It's it's fun, great great lyrics, uh, great harmonies, great. Um, great songs that you never listen anywhere else so it's just like a whole new thing and i think that's with every new sparks record so i think right now they're releasing a new one so i can really wait uh, to listen to this yeah so that's it for the list i hope you enjoyed maybe um you agree with me or don't agree with me but um yeah i'd like to listen about if you have like something else on your mind or disagree with like uh, the status of second row record and yeah hope to see you bye